Hello, welcome to my channel. I'm All Things Wrestling, and today I'm going to be reviewing WWE Monday Night Raw, 27th of January 2020. We kick off the show with brand new announcers Tom Phillips and Byron Saxton joining Jerry Lawler on Raw commentary. So they've sh shook it up and took Vic Jones off, which I did like. I would have personally left him on and got rid of Jerry Lawler, but that would have been my own choice. But yeah, nice shake up of the commentary team. Uh, then we have Drew McIntyre make his way to the ring, points at the WrestleMania sign. Uh, he says, it feels like I've been dreaming for the last 24 hours. I'm the winner of the Royal Rumble. Uh, it means I'm going to WrestleMania. I'm going to challenge Brock Lesnar at WrestleMania. Most of the boys in the back are terrified of him, but I'm not. I looked in his eyes and thought, I could claymore him over the top rope. And he did. He's had all beat Brock Lesnar for the WWE Championship at WrestleMania. But he says, I need to get this energy out and I'm in the mood to give out some Claymores. I'm going to have a Claymore party. Who wants to make a name for themselves? Who has the balls to fight Drew McIntyre? Uh, Carl Anson and Luke Gallows make their way to the ring. They accept the open challenge. And they have a two-on-one handicap match. Um, Drew... Uh, Clay hits a Claymore on Anderson and then Claymore's Gallows and pins both men. Uh, so he win. I'm not really good at the match a rating. It was kind of just made him make him look strong. So I'm not, I'm not going to rate the match. But after the match, uh, Drew threw out Gallows and Anderson. Brock Lesnar comes in the ring, sneaks up, hits an F5, holds about over his head, leaves. Uh, overall, nice promo from Drew. Uh, good little squash segment to make him look strong and then Brock Lesnar f 5 him because <laughs> Brock Lesnar is the beast incarnate I'm going to give the segment a 7 out of 10 for overall everything, it was a very nice way to open the Raw and this means officially Brock Lesnar has worked every live televised show that he is on in 2020 for January he's been on all of the Monday Night Raws and the pay-per-view. This is incredible. He's actually doing his fucking job for once. <laughs> Mental. Uh, then we see the TLC match from WrestleMania 2001. Just just amazing. Thank you. Uh, then we see MVP's video package. And then we have Rey Mysterio versus MVP. Yes, MVP returned. Um, MVP... Uh, uh, gets uh, hit in the back with a 619 and then springboard splash for a three count. Overall, it was nice to see MVP back in a match, a proper match. The match wasn't fantastic, and don't get me wrong, I'm going to give it a 2.25 out of 5. But it was very nice just the aesthetic of watching MVP versus Rey Mysterio. Bit of a nostalgia. Uh, then we go to our third match. Alistair Black versus Kenneth Joan Johnson. Johnson. Uh, Black hits Johnson leg a few times. German suplex. German suplex. Black mass. Three count. No rating for a local talent match, but another win for Alistair. Uh, then after the match, Black takes a mic and says, "Last night you got eliminated from the Royal Rumble. Before you think that people like Buddy Murphy or Seth Rollins are to blame, the only person accountable for the loss is myself." If he starts something, he just finish it. Is on him. He owns that loss. There's one more thing that he's accounted for over the last few months. He's waiting for people to come to him and knock on his door to pick a fight with him. He sits down. Says, as of tonight, he changes. You are not the one who picks the fight with me. I will bring the fight to you. I'm going to give it an eight out of ten. Alistair Black's really, really good on the microphone, and I'm intrigued to see what he's going to do. To be honest, I like Alistair Black. So, can't wait to see that. Uh, then we have Seth Rollins in the back. Oh, no. Uh, I think Seth was in the ring. He said he was close to winning the Royal Rumble for a second year in a row, but it was not on the cards. He was eliminated by the eventual winner. Seth tells Drew to enjoy it before they turn on you. He says there were two positives tonight. He eliminated Kevin Owens and Samojo and neither of them are going to WrestleMania. He reminds everyone that him and his new disciples became new disciple 
became the new tag champions. Kevin Owens and Samoa Joe laid out a challenge for a tar match, and Seth says he is the bloodnet leader and he accepts the challenge. He says, "Come out, Kevin and Joe, to get your ass kicked." They come out. Uh, Kevin says, uh, "Tell." Tells Joe that Seth talks too much. Kevin says you're not the, you're not only delusional, but, it, but you need to know that you are an absolute jackass for the last few months. He means it from the bottom of his heart. You suck. Seth tells Kevin to stop talking and fight for them for the titles. Joe says Seth is a bit has his big boy britches on. Kevin has been looking for a fight and he has to run away. Kevin says that he like, it's like Seth to have his hidden goods hid, hidden, hide goons hidden and ready to attack them are they under the ring or in the crowd Seth says I don't need AOP to win they're in the back and then we see them in the back uh, Joe says he feels much better and it isn't like cameras recorded thing from early today to uh, scam them Seth says uh, not to call him a liar and then Kevin and Joe call them a liar Joe asks to confirm that AOP is in Seth's uh, dressing room. Kevin and Joe thank Seth because they don't have to look for them anymore. Ivar and Eric attack them. <sighs> Overall, that part was entertaining. Going to give it a 6 out of 10. We then go to the actual tag match. Um, Owens with a stunner to Rollins, but Buddy with a roll-off for a three count. Match was alright. 2.75 out of 5. It was It was entertaining enough. So yeah, uh, we're moving on to uh, Becky Lynch being asked by Charlie uh, if she if she has accomplished what she wanted to do after being asked her. Becky said that she's doubted herself lately and she cashed in on the last debt. She said it hit her. She is a different league than those dopes. She has achieved what she wanted. She has beaten them all. Now everyone's in debt. Her debt has been collected on the next arse she beats it's because she wants to, not because she has to. Charlie and then asked her about uh, Charlotte possibly challenger, and she said it's not the first time, but it will be the last time. 5.5 5 out of 10. The usual kind of promo, not much exciting going on there. We then have Andrade versus Huberto. Uh, Carol Huberto for the uh, US Championship. Uh, Huberto with a round kick and a springboard round kick. Huberto with a moonsault and then Selena breaks up the cover and the referee calls for the bow. So Huberto won by disqualification. After the match, Huberto attacks Andrade on the floor, sends him into the ring steps, pulls up the ring mat, hammerlock DDT onto the floor. So Andrade has been taken out by Huberto. Now let's break kayfabe a little bit here and say the rumor is that Andrade took this to write him off TV because he's failed. A wellness policy violation and will be out for 30 days so there you go he may be out for 30 days due to a wellness policy violation so there's all fun there uh, then we see Edge's retirement speech from 2011 very nice uh, then Charlotte Flair makes her way to the ring she shows a video package of the Royal Rumble she brags she says she outlasted so 29 other women in 10 weeks she gets to face champion of her choice at WrestleMania. She did not take this decision lightly. At WrestleMania she's going to challenge for a championship because she's still thinking about it. Uh, then Asuka makes her way to the ring with Kari Sane. Uh, they get in the ring. Charlotte asks if Asuka's challenger. Kari and Asuka attack her and hit a double suplex leading to a match. Um, Charlotte Oh, Kari Zayn with an elbow drop before Asuka taps out because Charlotte had her in the figure eight. Uh, after the match, Kari with forearms Charlotte. Charlotte sends Kari into the turnbuckle and then hits a running boot. Uh, overall, match was really drab, to be honest. I'm going to give it a two out of five. It was quite boring, to be honest. Then we have the Street Profits, one out of ten. Uh, but Kelly Kelly did show up and introduce uh, and Angelo introduced himself. Montez says that Kelly and Angelo are so cute. Uh, then they mentioned the twenty four seven title is up next. Kelly Kelly returned. I'm going to give that a five out of ten just for the Kelly Kelly. But the actual Street Profits one out of ten. 
Uh, Mojo Rawley is then in the ring. He says, I'm about to challenge the, uh, for an actual match for my title. He said, uh, like any franchise quarterback knows, you need strong offensive linemen to have your blind side. He introduces Riddick Moss. Uh, he said, anyone who wants to take this from him, you're going to get blocked. We have Mojo Rawley versus No Way Jose in an official match. Uh, Mojo Rawley hits a running punch, face, uh, followed by a face plant, and then Fireman's carry for a three count. After the match, a clown comes into the ring, rolls up Mojo, pins him. It's R-Truth. Uh... He takes off the clown outfit. Mojo sends Truth to face first into the mat and pins him for the th- to win the title back. Uh, gonna give it a six out of ten for the overall segment. Entertaining enough, R Truth for funny in a clown outfit, but the actual match doesn't get a rating because it wasn't anything. We then have Lana versus Liv Morgan. Liv with a forearm flatliner in the ropes for a three count. One point two five out of five. Moving on. Then we had Eric Rowan versus Brandon. Uh, this says Vice, but I swear his last name was different. I, d- I don't know. Eric Rowan with a floor, claw, claw slam for a three count. Not going to rate it, but Eric's still getting wins and he's actually being featured. So, uh, yeah, fantastic. Uh, then we have Edge making his way to the ring. He high fives the announcers. He starts speaking but cannot because of emotion. Then manages to like get himself together. He says, as a performer, athlete, and artist, your reaction he got last night at the Rumble, and the reaction he got tonight, you don't know what it means to me. Uh, he uh, he thanks everybody. He addresses the elephant in the room. He said, I'm standing here one day removed from the Royal Rumble. Nine years ago, I was medically disqualified from ever doing this again, and I refuse to live in a world of what ifs. When he asked what if he would get to work and make the what if disappear over the years he started to feel pretty good and asked himself what if what if I came back home Edge got to work and got a second neck surgery and busted his ass he got into the best shape of his life at 46 years old so he could get back here and end the career on his terms he said he found himself in the Royal Rumble with some familiar faces and some new faces Randy Orton Roman Reigns AJ Styles Seth Rollins Kevin Owens Alistair Black Matt Riddle the names go on and on he says he hopes to see you down the road he said, I'm not fooling myself. I know this might not last that long. It does. It, I don't know how long this is going to last. But well, I hope you'll join me on this ride. He thanks Daniel Bryan for getting his first yes chant. He says he knows he's a little bit older, a little bit greyer. He has crow's feet, but that is the roadmap that got him here. He said that one thing you cannot fabricate, fake or force down someone's throat unless you had it. He said he has grit and if you knock me down, I'll get back up. Randy Orton then makes his way to the ring, hugs um, Edge. Randy then gets a mic and says, he had a destructive personality, but when he dug a hole too deep to get out of, there was one guy that, who would grab his hand and pull him out. That was you, man. Welcome home, Edge. You are my brother and my family. Last night, that energy when your music hit, the feeling and the chemistry we had was special. Randy has a what-if for Edge. Uh... I don't know how you're going to react or these people, but what if we've rated RKO got back together one more time? They look around, Orton with an RKO, leads the ring, gets a chair, uh, hits the chair on the back of Ed, uh, Edge's back, Edge tries to crawl it away, Orton grabs the chair again, puts it around Edge's head, uh, Orton goes up to the turnbuckle, Orton thinks about what he's doing, he gets off the turnbuckle, pulls the chair off Edge, Throws the chair on the floor and leaves the ring. Uh, he then brings another chair into the ring, puts it under Edge's head. Orton sets up for a one-man concerto and connects. Crack straight over Edge's head. No. What are you doing, Randy? You sick bastard. Seriously, this is Edge. This man has neck problems. You could have killed him for God's sake. You evil bastards. Honestly. So good. So damn good. Seriously. Uh, I mean, yeah, great. Um, I'm, I'm just trying to put into words how good this segment was. I mean, just, just to put people's minds at rest, 
concerning the concerto, the actual concerto didn't connect with Edge's head. Just to confirm. Well, whether Edge is okay or not, because that RKO did look nasty, I can't confirm. But the actual concerto did not make any connection, so I'm hoping Edge is okay. We'll wait and see. Uh, but yeah, this segment... I mean, I'm going to have to break my own rating system and give it an 11 out of 10. I know that makes no sense, but it it was just the perfect segment. 10 out of 10 doesn't sum up how damn good this segment was. 11 out of 10. And trust me, you ain't going to see many of those. Absolutely fantastic. Overall, the show was entertaining. Uh, I enjoyed it. I'm going to give it a 6.5 out of 10. No, I'm going to go one higher. 7 out of 10. It was a very enjoyable episode of Monday Night Raw. I mean, yes, there was a couple of slow and annoying bits like Liv and Lana. But hey-ho, you can't have 100% flawless. But it was a very good show for me. I massively enjoyed it. But yeah, that has been my review. I do hope you've enjoyed it. If you have, please smash that like button, share and subscribe, and I shall catch you all later. Bye!